So today we're going to talk about the storage and feeding of feeds. Most of this you probably already know. So when you're storing your feeds, especially grains, you want to store them in a dry, cool, well-ventilated area. This is mostly to keep your grains from overheating so that the vitamins in the grains do not get broken down and become useless to you. You want it to be waterproof and so that it doesn't grow any mold. As we'll find out in a couple of weeks here, mold is highly toxic to horses and it can cause all sorts of different problems. So you really want your grains to stay dry. That way they don't have any mold and you don't have risk injuring your horse. And of course you want it to be rodent proof as well because rodents carry any number of diseases in their feces and you don't want your horse to be eating that along with their grains. There are many different types of storage bins or barrels or whatever that you can put your grains in to keep them cool and dry and not necessarily well ventilated but if you're using a small amount at a time it's not as big a deal to have them ventilated. Now I do have a few different types here in the pictures. As far as barrels, you can use plastic or metal. It, I would throw a word of caution to you using the aluminum trash cans, however. Aluminum flakes off and when a horse ingests any of that aluminum, then that can interfere with the uptake of copper in the body. And as we know, copper is needed for a healthy bone matrix and so your horse can get a lot of problems from ingesting a lot of aluminum so I would definitely caution you against that now the plastic barrels are wonderful the rubber ones that you get at Home Depot or whatever those are great too those generally have a fitted lid so that you can lock them in place or at least make it difficult for a horse to get into there are many different types of grain boxes out on the market now you can make yourself one out of wood you can buy them out of plastic they have different metal type ones. The two that I showed the pictures of here are just a couple of the many different varieties that they have. All of these though will have a fitted lid and or a seal or lock. This is to keep horses out of them when they shouldn't be in them of course. And they are generally sealed against rodents and moisture. Now a word of caution with that, the grain box that is made out of wood Depending on the type of wood that you make it out of, uh, a lot of people would go with the cheap particle board or plywood. If this gets wet, it will soak up the, all of the moisture and then your grain bin is no longer a dry area for your feed. Just a word of caution on that. Now grain silos can come anywhere from large to small. I do have a picture in the bottom right of that one. And this one is so that you can put in up to about a ton of feed at a time and you just measure it out into your buckets, take it and feed it to your horses. These are really great if you do buy in bulk. If you don't need to buy in bulk, it is just as easy and uh, as economical to have a grain barrel or a grain box. Now your grain barrels or your grain boxes generally are going to hold anywhere from 50 to 100 pounds at a time. Some will hold a little bit more, but mostly they're not going to hold a bulk amount of grain. So your silo would be your better choice. Now all of these need to be put in a place where you have easy access and that the rodents and the horses themselves cannot get into them. So for storing your hay, there are many different ways and varieties and all sorts of different things to do with your hay. Now ideally, in any situation, your hay is going to be covered. It is going to be off the ground, meaning either on a concrete slab or on pallets. It's going to be well ventilated and it's going to have easy access. Now it needs to be covered. Why? To keep off the sunshine and the weather. Remember, your vitamins will leach out of your hay with weather and time and sunlight. Okay, it needs to be off the ground. If you place your hay on the ground, then all of the moisture in the ground will be soaked up by your bottom bales, making them useless to you as horse hay. You can keep them for steer hay or cow hay if you need to. That is not a problem, but if you just have horses, those bales will be rendered useless by being on the ground in the moisture. Of course, well ventilated. We want to make sure that it stays nice and cool. If there is any type of mold or anything in those bottom bales, if they get too hot, they can spontaneously combust and burn down your entire 
haystack and structure in structure so you want to keep that well ventilated and keep the air moving across everything now easy access well we need easy access so that you can feed your horses in a easy amount of time that you're not having to work too hard to get to it now I've shown different examples of haystacks here and they again can run the gamut from big and huge expensive deals to nothing at all like in the middle picture now in the middle picture it is noteworthy to let you know in the middle picture it is definitely a need to know that this hay is obviously weathered it is not green it is not dry uh, you can see a little bit of black running up the side here and so right here I would bet there is some mold or mildew in this hay again it's not off the ground so these bottom bales are going to be useless so this hay any kind of the horse hay is going to be in the middle of the stack hopefully if the snow and the rain have not leaked down through the bales into the middle of the stack as well now on the bottom this is generally what most host horse owners are going to have pallets with the hay on top of it covered by a tarp is this wrong absolutely not it's covered it's off the ground it's ventilated with the air running underneath of it due to the pallets and it's easy access being right there by where you're going to feed your horses now at the very bare minimum when you store your hair hay it needs to be easy access because what are you doing with it well you're feeding with it so at the very bare min minimum it needs easy access just know that if you don't have it covered off the ground um, you will probably lose some of your hay to weather and to the elements mold mildew all of that can cost you some hay so that is just something that you need to know all right now if you have to store your hay in the barn first of all it is a fire hazard that's something that everyone should know already but if you have to store it in the barn you want to take some precautions to keep it from being a fire hazard if like in the picture up here to the right if you possibly can cover the walls and the insulation at the top with fire resistant material that will help um, but if one of those gets moldy and it does happen to spontaneously combust the loft where it is sitting on plus all of those horse stalls below are going to burn all right so your hay loft if you have to have it inside the floor needs to be solid and sealed and the reason for this is is if anything from the hay the dust seeds particles anything from that hay floats down into your horse's stall that can cause them some lung and eye issues as he's breathing it in and it will settle in his eyes as well so you want that floor to be solid and sealed now if you can put it in a feed room in your barn ideally it should have concrete walls and a floor why well because that is fire resistant okay the roof generally would be high enough that if you had a fire start in there um, hopefully it wouldn't catch the roof of the barn immediately on fire but then again if you could line the roof with the fire resistant material that would help as well at the very bare minimum for your feed room you need to have a sealed room well ventilated and possibly a pallet floor or a concrete floor again so that you don't lose those bottom bales to mold or mildew which if getting too hot they can spontaneously combust and you want it sealed from rodents or anything else that might make a nest in there when you are feeding the most important thing to remember about feeding is to feed by weight and not volume we calculate our horses feed ration in a percentage of their body weight which is again weight not volume and remember a horse can eat one and a half to two percent of his body weight daily in hay two percent being the max one and a half percent being on average all right the next thing you need to know is for your horses anatomical being you should not feed any more than eight pounds of concentrate at a feeding this covers any of your whole grains or your mixed feeds you don't want to feed any more than eight pounds at a feeding why well he has a small stomach remember you don't want to feed him much more than that because a he doesn't have the room for it in there and b when all of that concentrate hits the small intestine and then goes into the cecum and the hindgut 
that is going to end up being fermented at a very fast rate. And when that does, you run the risk of colicking and foundering your horse. Now, one way to minimize this is to feed your hay first so that he has all of that in his guts before he gets his concentrate. Now, sometimes this is not possible. So you want to make sure that you are not feeding more than eight pounds of concentrated of feeding. So with your hay, when you are feeding it, it's good to take a bale here and there and weigh out however many flakes of hay you think he needs. Grass hay is going to weigh less than a tightly belled legume hay. So you want to get yourself a kitchen scale or a bathroom scale or a, a hay net with a fish scale and just every once in a while weigh one or two flakes out of your hay bale so you know how much each one weighs. Now if you get all of your hay from the same producer, those bales aren't going to ch vary a whole lot from bale to bale. So doing it once a week would be okay. Now if you get hay from different producers, the way they bale something is going to be different from the next guy and so you want to make sure that you are weighing each one of those different bales as you feed it. When you're feeding a concentrate, remember that grains do not weigh the same and this is one of the reasons why we feed by weight and not volume. Grains don't weigh the same. So a three pound coffee can full of corn is going to weigh a whole lot more than a three pound coffee can full of oats because corn is much more dense and is going to weigh a lot more. So when we feed our co concentrates, we want to again feed by weight, not by volume. Get yourself a little bathroom scale or the kitchen scale, whatever it needs to be. Put your coffee can or your feed scoop on it, weigh it, and then fill it up to what you think your horse needs, weigh it again, and then you know exactly how much your horse is getting. The easiest way to founder or colic your horse is to be feeding him by volume and not weight. He's going to get way too much of, say, for instance, corn, which is a very energy dense feed that all hits the hindgut he's going to ferment it very rapidly and he's going to founder now the picture at the bottom shows the different varieties of feed scoops and feed buckets so when you are feeding your horse again you want to know how much you are feeding them by weight and not volume when you tell somebody you feed your horse one scoop of whole oats that could be any one of those four scoops on there. Or he gets a three pound bucket of corn and that bucket could be that size. There's, of course, we all know that there are a million different sizes of buckets as well. Okay, so again, you want to weigh out your feed in order to correctly feed him what he needs. And this is based on two things. Grains don't weigh the same. And because we always We always calculate a ration based on the horse's body weight and therefore we need to do the same for the feed. All right, so some feeding tips. When you are feeding with your feed bins or tubs or buckets or whatnot, there are some things to keep in mind for safety. Of course, you don't want any sharp edges on your buckets. If you have a broken plastic bucket, throw it away. They're cheap enough that you can get another one. You don't want any sharp plastic edges where a horse can poke out his eye. Uh, rip open a nostril or anything like that. You want round or rounded corners. What do I mean by that? Well, if you have a square bucket that has corners, your horse can't get his nose in there. He's not going to be able to get all of the feed. Feed is going to accumulate in there and after a while he's going to end up having a whole bunch of grain in one corner that eventually he will be able to have access to, thus giving him a really large dose of feed and again can founder or colic your horse. So if you have round or rounded corners he can get his nose in there get access to all of the feed at one time and you don't have a buildup of feeds. You want to make sure that your bucket or bin or tub is large enough for both his head and a little bit of breathing room. Now this isn't always possible but you want to make sure that he can take a breath while he's in there and not worry about being scared to not get enough air. So a horse is going to be much more likely to eat out of a, out of a bucket if they feel safe. Um, these buckets can be stationary or not. You can, you know, have them 
clipped to the wall or on a bracket or as the hook over bucket there does hooked over the fence and whatnot those would be stationary or like the rubber tub at the bottom where they just have them out in the pasture and can move all of your feed tubs buckets or whatever need to be easy cleaning you don't want any buildup of feed in there you don't want any buildup of mold or mildew and you definitely don't want to build up of yuck or gunk where they've pooped or peed in it and then it's sat in there you need to be able to clean those regularly now one other thing i want to caution you with your feed buckets or bins or tubs the picture up at the top left this one has bolt clips you want to make sure that those are all securely fastened and that the smooth edges are pointed toward the inside of the bucket. I have seen horses rip off eyelids and get punctures in their eyes from these bolt clips. They can be a little dangerous. So if possible, make it as safe as you can. Even duct tape those things. If you don't need to unclip that bucket, very often duct tape those things to make sure that the horses do not have access to those clips and can put a hole in their eyelids now the other thing too is with the buckets on the bottom right right now in the pictures you see little black rubber thingies co covering the edges of the bucket handles those wear off and fall off and when that happens then you have the sharp metal of those buckets with access access to your horse. Now I have also seen horses rip up nostrils and eyelids on these as well. So if those have fallen off it's a good idea to use your electrical tape or duct tape and tape those back up to where there is a smooth edge. You don't want your horse to get injured from your bucket. So again we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of a low feeder versus a high feeder. So a low feeder is good for draining the sinuses. You want those sinuses to drain. The only way to clear a sinus infection in a horse is to drill a hole through their head into the sinus cavity. This is painful, a lot of work, and expensive. So if you can get your horse to drain his sinuses on his own, this is great. A low feeder is also good for stretching his back and the abdomen. However, a low feeder is very easy to poop or pee in. It's easy to get step, to get caught in or to step in and maybe break it if it's not rubber. And usually there's going to be some more wastage as horses will put their head up a little bit in order to chew. Now a high feeder is going to have less waste as a horse keeps his head generally at the feeder level to chew. They're less likely to poop or pee in it and it can't be tipped over or stepped in. However, with a high feeder, your horse is not draining his sinuses. There is no stretching of the back or the abdomen. And depending on where your high feeder is, this can put the neck at an odd angle when he's pulling out hay. This can re increase the risk of a pinched nerve in the neck due to the angle at which he has to pull the hay out. If you are feeding grain to horses on pasture, there are different things that you can do. For instance, you have four horses in a pasture you need to feed to. You need to tie them up so each horse will get his own and then untie them as they're finished eating. Or you can place the feeders far enough apart so that the horses feel safe enough to eat. Now this means the horse at the bottom of the totem pole needs to get enough time to eat. So one of the things you can do for this is make sure you feed your alpha horse first so that he's got his attention on his dinner and not running off the poor little horse at the bottom. And try and set out one more feeder than there are horses to ensure that the last horse does get his share. So maybe that alpha horse, you split up his ration into the two different pans so that when he's finished with the first one, he can eat on the second one and that bottom horse is still getting what he needs to. When feeding hay, you want to make sure that your feeder is lower than the withers of the smallest horse. And this is because you don't want that odd angle for that smaller horse when he is getting hay. The trough should be free of sharp edges and long enough for all the horses to have room. So if again you have these four horses in there eating out of a trough, you want to make sure there's enough room that the horse at the bottom of the totem pole will be able to get in and get his share. If you have to feed on the ground, this is great, but make sure that you feed him in piles far enough apart to again let the lower horse feel safe and feed one more pile than there are horses so that the last horse does get his share, same as with the grain. 
When feeding round bales, you need to make sure that there is adequate room for all your horses. If you have 10 horses needing to eat on a round bell, this is probably not going to be enough room around your round bell feeder. Maybe you need two out there at a time. You want to make sure that your round bell feeder is in good condition, that there are no pieces that are bent or sharp that could cut into a horse. You want to make sure that nothing is laying down in there where they would feel they could walk in on top of the hay and then get stuck. You want to check for string or twine daily. When you put your round bell out, you would generally take off all of the string or the twine and take it back with you to the barn to throw away. However, some of it inevitably will get lost. If you are looking for it every day and can pick that up, you reduce the risk of your horse actually eating that and causing himself some intestinal disturbance. You want to remove all of the moldy and wet hay at the bottom in order to prevent sickness. Again, we'll talk about this more in a couple of weeks, but mold and mildew is really hard on your horse's respiratory system as well as their digestive system. Soaking hay is another thing that we do for feeding horses, but why do we do that? Well, the number one reason for soaking hay is to reduce allergens and to um, reduce dust. So mostly it's for horses that will have COPD or severe allergies. These horses need their hay soaked so that they're not getting anything in their eyes to cause them to have an allergic reaction or that they're not breathing it in to cause those lungs that are already having enough trouble with the COPD to have a bad reaction as well. Now you want to soak it in a clean bucket or a wheelbarrow, more like a muck bucket or a wheelbarrow. You don't want any poop or pee or anything in there because again, your horse is going to be eating this. If you soak it for about 10 to 20 minutes, this gives the hay a chance to really soak up the moisture and makes it easier for the horse to chew, but it also eliminates those allergens and dust factors. But if you soak it for any longer than the 20 minutes, then you run the risk of leaching out all of those vitamins that is in the hay. Soaked hay can be fed either in a hay net or a feeder. If the hay net is, is your choice, you need to make sure that it is hung high enough that when it is empty, your horse is not gonna get a leg through and cause himself some other injury. Now a feeder, you wanna make sure that again, it is clean every time because if you put the water in and the soaked hay on top of that, water will go to the bottom. And if you have a pile of manure at the bottom, they're gonna end up eating manure soaked water. So you wanna make sure that everything stays clean.